Hey, what's up you guys? Wanted to answer a question that came in from actually several people about fasting and metabolism. And um, one of my longtime viewers here named Dusty asked the question, does the metabolic rate go down if we undereat on eating days? Now he started out by detailing how he feels tired on his eating days, especially if he goes over, if he eats too much. And I just want to mention real quick, Dusty, that that's a common, that's common for me too. I feel tired. It doesn't have anything to do necessarily with metabolism. I think it has more to do with um, digestion. You know, like I just, I noticed that on the days that I eat, I feel less energetic. And I think the digestion, you know, the fact that all that blood that was in your brain is now flowing down into your intestines and your stomach and um, all those processes that come in kind of creates a little bit of a drag on um, feasting days. So I, I get that. But, you know, in a broader perspective, does fasting lower metabolism? Um, and then from Doug, who is actually in the Marine Corps, thank you for uh, writing to me, Doug, and uh, the comment you left. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. My dad was a Marine during the Vietnam conflict, and um, I actually wanted to go in the Marines myself, but was prevented because of childhood asthma, which is one of the things I talk about on this channel. But he asked basically the same question. Uh, do you think that over time, your BMR, that means basal metabolic rate, not including from weight loss, will decrease from taking in reduced calories overall. Now, this is a common question, and it's one that I asked myself um, when I started scoping out the idea of fasting for weight loss. And I think I mentioned in my very first video that I had done a longer fast, a 21-day fast, a water fast, where I just drank water um, for 21 days, and that... I know for a fact that that, re that slowed my metabolism drastically. How do I know? Because when I started eating again, I gained weight so fast you couldn't believe it, and then some. And, um, you know, so I know that a long extended fast will lower metabolism. Another thing that will lower metabolism, and it should be said, let me just say this real quick, metabolism is a complicated subject, you guys. It is complex as all get out. And how do we know this? Because medical students study metabolism for about a year, and they probably and probably longer. Um, but yet they still don't understand it. And I know that because if if there was scientific consensus about metabolism, and if there was a real understanding of these processes, there'd be no fat people, y'all. There'd be nobody who was fat because everybody would know what they needed to do to lose weight and maintain a fast metabolism. You know, are there some people out there that just have a faster metabolism than others? You're darn right. Yes. Just the same as, you know, everybody knows a person who can eat whatever they want and they never gain weight. And we just attribute it. It's like this mystery. You know, some people just have a... Metabolism is something that's very individualized. And for those of you who don't know, when we talk about BMR, which Doug mentioned... <clears throat> BMR is basal metabolic rate, and that is different for every individual. And what that is basically is just the, the calories that your body expends just existing. Okay, so just sitting there, if you were just to sit on the couch or if you were just to sleep all the time and your body has to use energy to keep your heart pumping, to keep your lungs breathing, to keep things moving through your gut, um, and to do all the checks that it needs to do, just existing, that is your basal metabolic rate, okay, before you do anything else. And um, so that's different for everybody. It depends on height, depends on weight, depends on all those things. And there's not a whole lot you can do to change it. Uh, it's definitely where most of your calories go, is just in, you know, in terms of expenditure in your body, is just in existence, just keeping you, you're functioning and you're, the processes, the dynamical, the dynamic things that are going on in your body at the cellular level and all throughout, that's your BMR, okay? So the one-size-fits-all uh, slogan that we all know about weight loss is eat less, move more. Eat less, move more. How does that actually affect metabolism? The move more part... Um, 
doesn't, you know, if you were to increase your exercise and really start exercising because you say, oh, I got to speed my metabolism up. Well, guess what? You really can't do it that much. It's kind of one of those things that's really hard to do. One of the big factors is um, exercise, you know, in exercise, the reason that it can help a little bit with metabolism is because if you increase the muscle in your body and you change your body composition, those things affect metabolism. And that's why Doug said in his email, not including weight loss. You know, because when you lose weight, your metabolism changes. When you gain weight, your metabolism changes. When you stop exercising, your metabolism changes. When you increase exercise, your metabolism changes. So it is a complex and dynamic process, okay? And the one thing we need to understand about it is that here's a, here's a common thing that happens. People like me who are 40 years old, I'm 42 almost, but people get into their 30s and 40s and 50s and they're like, hmm, I'm gonna die soon. If I don't make changes, I'm gonna die soon. And they start thinking about, you know, the Grim Reaper. And uh, that's probably a good thing because it does, it, for some people, they, you know, start to change their behavior. But, you know, and, I, and I'm one of those people. I'm like, you know what? I want to be here for my kids. I want to be here for my grandkids. I want to do the best that I can <clears throat> within the scope of things that I have control over to, you know, as live as long as I can. But in the aging process, you guys, very important to understand this. It is a normal part of aging for your basal metabolic rate to go down. And a lot of that has to do with body composition. It has to do with the fact that we lose muscle as we age. And, and that muscle is replaced by fatty tissue. Doesn't that sound wonderful? It's true. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad tidings, but you guys know this. When we leave the womb, we're on the path to death. And uh, I say it with a smile. Because what we're really doing here is we're trying to reduce the effects of aging. We're trying to delay those effects um, with most of our weight loss programs and exercise programs and all that. But that's what it, it, it that's why it's so complicated because it ties into this metabolism question. Okay? So, and it's inevitable. So, it's a common mistake when you're that, for, you know, middle-aged person who's, who's trying to lose weight. It's a common mistake to think, okay, I'm going to do the same things that I did when I was young. And I'm going to adopt the one-size-fits-all solution to weight loss and and what the doctors say and what the what the fitness books say and what everybody says is that I should eat less and move more. That's the one size fits all philosophy to weight loss. And guess what? It don't work. No, it doesn't. When you eat less, consistently eat less, you slow that metabolism down because your body adjusts in time. And this is why people plateau when they're losing weight. When you cut those calories down, you guys, your body's expenditure, your body adjusts. It says this person is insane and it slows down its expenditure. Okay. And then when you start to eat again and exercise again, <clears throat> your metabolism comes up and your body's, your, your expenditures come up and your body adjusts. And that's the way it works. So if you go on a really long fast, um, extended fast, you know, 20 days, something crazy, 30, 40 days, your metabolism is going to definitely drop. <clears throat> if you're in dusty situation and you're, um, you're maybe, you're having trouble eating enough on your feeding days, okay? What that basically means is that you're reducing calories every day. You're eating a deficit of calories every day. If you do that, yes, your metabolism is going to drop. This channel is about alternate day fasting, which is an intermittent fasting protocol. Well, guess what? The science is in, the studies are in. And intermittent fasting will not, repeat, intermittent fasting will not reduce your metabolism. If anything, there are some studies that show that it may increase metabolism, but it definitely will not reduce it. You know, so if you're looking to maintain your metabolism, lose weight while maintaining <clears throat> the high metabolic processes of your body, the answer is not to eat less, it's to eat the same amount less often. Does that make sense? <clears throat> we're basically 
reducing all the intermittent fasting protocols are reducing the time window for eating basically that's what they're doing you know so you have a period of fasting and and that keeps the body guessing okay because you're constantly putting you're putting food in there every two days or um, whatever your protocol is you know if you fast for 20 hours and eat for four hours whatever whatever the protocol is <clears throat> it's based on the same idea that you're going for a period of fasting and then you're eating so make sure dusty in your case you got to eat that you got to eat on your eating days man I'm not saying to go out and melt down a bucket of ice cream and suck it through a straw <laughs> I'm not saying to do that I'm just saying to understand this process you, that your body will slow down and you'll and you will plateau eventually if you slow that metabolic rate down you want to keep it up and intermittent fasting can help you keep it up and it's the same for you Doug in the in your uh, marine requirements you know your body your height and weight ratio and all that stuff <clears throat> you don't need to have that concern that uh, that intermittent fasting alternate day fasting is going to slow down your metabolism as long as you're getting enough to eat on the other days on the days that you eat or in the time window that you eat in you'll be fine nothing to worry about and um, you know because overall in metabolic process fasting has been shown to um, help us maintain lean mass so lose fat people who are doing intermittent fasting lose fat they don't lose lean mass okay and there's lots of studies out there there's lots of people that people that have written about this idea one of the ones that helped me quite a bit was this uh, book right here dr. Jason Fung wrote this book the obesity code he has another book out called uh, the complete guide to fasting which believe it or not I haven't read yet I need to get it ordered and read it because it, you know it probably be help me and um, that's one of the things that I do to motivate myself is I keep trying to understand more about this process and um, and that's one of the reasons these questions are great you know these questions that come in to the channel here uh, just because it, it helps me like I I have to in order to answer you I have to go do my research too and so uh, it's a win-win for me but you know, if you want to understand more about the fact that that the inflammation in the body is reduced when we do intermittent fasting, that uh, we maintain our lean mass when we do intermittent fasting, and that metabolic numbers, when you get a metabolic workup, and that's your lipids, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your blood glucose, and um, insulin resistance, another big one, all those things are improved by intermittent fasting. They are not improved by calorie restriction every day or by long periods of fasting okay so it's a common myth it just seems to persist that fasting will send your body into starvation mode that uh, you know you just won't uh, you, the whole thing will slow down and you'll put weight on more easily later it's just a myth it's just not true so I appreciate the questions you guys and uh, I've got some more some more videos coming here soon in the meantime, on those feast days, eat up. Eat up, y'all. And uh, on your fast days, you know, I've got to the point where I enjoy it either way. It's like a fast day, I feel good. Feast day, I feel good. And you just learn. There's an ebb and flow to it, you know, the, the cycle of it. You just learn to enjoy it in time. But eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we fast. Have a good one.